correct route is this morning begins on the Elizabeth River, named for Princess Elizabeth of England. We'll show you many types of ships, Navy and Commercial Marine. On this tour today, we're also going to point out sides of interest and either shoreline as we head out of the Hampton Road, located to your right, but over on the left side of the first pier. That's one of the largest floating dry docks in the United States. The dock on our right is named Titan. The Titan Dock was constructed in Brazil just over 40 years ago. Back to your right, we've got a great chance to view the USS New York setting high and dry into the water. It's been in the dry dock now for a little over three months and going some bottom repair work. Coming into beach, you're right, it's all number five. That's the USS Baton. We mentioned earlier, eight of the class were constructed. We've also mentioned to you the largest amphibious assault ships in the world. Baton is a means of an air support for the Marines during assaults. That's a big ship with a battle load, a 42,000 ton ship, making really the approximate size of an Essex class World War II aircraft carrier. Well, number three, which is named USS Kearsarge, so we'll see three of the eight of this class will construct on today's tour. Keep looking to your right, this bass baton is a very large white and gray boxy looking barge coming into view. That's a barracks barge, it's Carly House and the crew off the baton, while there's ships in the yard to want to go repair. It's Waterside, a festival marketplace. Waterside was initially built here back in the early 1980s. Several years ago, the city of Norfolk closed the building down and set vacant for a number of years. Around three years ago, renovations began in Waterside with a company called the Cornish Corporation. This company is specializing in revitalizing Ross projects that go on ahead of us. Beginning with a partial demo of the building, it since added additional restaurants and stores. And Waterside officially reopened about a year and a half ago as the Waterside District, the Hampton Cruise and Celebration Center. That's a unique building. It's a combination cruise ship terminal and convention center, which went into operation about 11 years ago. Norfolk's been hosting cruise ships for a number of years, but the opening of this terminal has really enhanced the city's ability to accommodate cruise ships more efficiently. A large great building now in view is Nauticus, the National Maritime Center, which is currently entering its 26th year of operation. A $52 million maritime museum that offers a variety of interactive exhibits, hosting traveling exhibits, home to the Hampton Roads Naval Museum, and also home to the battleship USS Wisconsin. The Wisconsin derives the largest warship on the tour with a battle load that's a 58,000 ton ship, 887 foot in length, 108 foot across her beam. And you're going to find this interesting. The Navy built the Iowa class ships to this specification that would just barely permit a ship like that to trans the locks of the Panama Canal. The Iowa cash ships were commissioned back in the 40s. This is ahead of us, we'll find some condominiums. These condos directly ahead of us are called the Pierpoint Condos. And they were built here about the same time the battleship arrived in Norfolk around 16 years ago. NOAA is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And that facility, they map and chart the bottoms of oceans, harbors, rivers, bays, and sounds. And turn the charts used by ship and boat captains almost the same as a motorist would use a road map. Let's uh, direct your attention a bit further down a waterfront to your right and ahead of us coming up on yet another private shipyard. This next one coming up is operated by a company called Marine Hydraulics International. The shipyard performing mainly government contract work and they only do top sub repair work here. There are no dry docking facilities in the shipyard. They're currently working on uh, actually three ships here today. Uh, let's drop with the two ships on this side. The one all the way in shore, the right, the larger of those three ships we'll see today in the USS Oak Hill. It's an assault ship, an early Borough class missile destroyer that is named the USS Laboon. Next beers that of your right are called the Lambers Point Docks. These docks are actually owned by the Norfolk Southern Railway. They are operated through Norfolk Southern by Lambers Point Docks Incorporated. These are older general merchandise beers. Export of these beers a lot of heavy equipment and machinery, including railroad locomotives. Rubber plywood and paper products that are coming in primarily from South America. The head of us, you're right, the gray one is classified as a large, medium speed roll on, roll off ship. A ship like this may be activated during an emergency in time of war to supplement primarily the arming and moving and transporting mechanized equipment. The three black hole ships are called NPS, or military pre positioning ships. To our left, we're now looking at a fairly new $500 million highly automated container facility, privately owned by a company known as AP Mullen Mersk. Mersk is based out of Copenhagen, Denmark, but at the present time, Mersk has the largest containerized cargo operation in the world. Coming up on our left and ahead of us, the United States Navy is refueling depot in Kermany Island. It's the largest military fuel depot in the United States, one of the largest in the world. And Navy's fleet boilers and other underway replenishment ships call here to take on petroleum products. state-owned container facilities offered in Florida, Virginia. Anyways, the terminal to your right is very similar to the APM terminal that passed behind us a few minutes ago, with the exception the terminal to your right is not nearly as automated. 
his method of handling cargo called containerized. It's cheaper, faster, it's a lot more efficient than the older methods and concepts which cargo was handled. On the other side of Pier 3, head to your right, you are now looking at the largest naval operating base in the world. This is Naval Station, Norfolk, Virginia. Base CRI was established here in 1917. Present day it occupies about 3,400 acres, which also makes us the largest military base in the world. Home to just under 90 warships and nearly 100,000 men and women that call Norfolk their home port. We're going to find a large white ship on the other side of Pier 1. Many of you might be familiar with that ship. That is the United States Naval Hospital Ship Comfort. Navy operating maintained two hospital ships, the Comfort to your white home port here in Norfolk, Virginia. Over a year ago, Comfort was activated at the New York Harbor. She arrived in New York in the first part of May and remained in New York for only about a month before we returned to Norfolk. Initially, sent to help with the COVID-19 crisis taking place in New York, but also at about the same time the ship arrived, the Javits Center had opened up and they did all the COVID work on this ship. They did other medical procedures, but no COVID work on the Comfort. She was only in New York again for about a month. The ship closest to us on the side of Pier 2, that is whole 61 U.S. That's Ramage. The Ramage is an early berth by this guy that does destroy him. The Ramage closest to us, it's an early berth between two vessels launches on that ship. One launcher back on this end of the Ramage, the other one up on her bow. Ramage carries up to 90 vessels situated in vertical launch. We'll see here in Pier 3 today are identical. Those are both Virginia class attack subs. They're the newest and finest to be added to the U.S. fleet. Considered super high speed, super quiet, and deep diving. The subs are 377 foot long, 33 foot across their beam, and they would each carry a crew of about 126. Both submarines are powered by one nuclear reactor in the core and the reactor plant. Only submarines will power them for 15 to 20 years between refuelings, equivalent to a distance of over a million miles in steaming time. Up on the bow, the number 74 is a fully automated 5 inch 54 caliber gun. Up on the bow, the number 87, the Mason, that's an upgraded 5 inch gun, a 62. 5 and 62 with an effective range of about 18 miles. The mounts will pump out 20 rounds per minute. Again, the weight of the Jack Doll, about 70 pounds. Again, keep in mind the easiest way to identify these Aegis equipped ships out here today is going to be quite simple. Look at their upper structures located on this eight side of their octagon shaped plates, which is the spot one radar. It's a pretty good indication it's an Aegis equipped ship. As a, uh, another Aegis equipped ship on the left side of the pier, all the way in shore to the right, it is a Ticonderoga class cruiser named for the Battle of Normandy, which is number 60. The side of the pier closest to us is a Ticonderoga class cruiser, number 56, named for the Battle of San Jacinto. Ship to our left, number 55, named for the Battle of Lake Tico. Two ships at the base of the pier are both Arleigh Burks. The ship on this side, all the way in shore to the right, is hull number 7 USS Gravely. It's a ship that many of you might be familiar with. The ship's hull number is 67. Her name is the USS Cole. She was involved in a terrorist attack that took place in the coal at Abdin Yemen in October of 2000. The coal then to the port of Abdin Yemen to be refueled while at a fueling station taking one fuel. Two men in a small boat approached that ship. As they neared the coal, they turned towards her and picked up speed before the crew could react. That small boat struck the coal on her left the port side, striking the ship's hull. A tremendous explosion took place and ripped a 40 by 60 foot hole in the side of that ship. The explosion killed 17 of the board of the coal and injuring 34 others. We were close to sinking that day had it not been for the heroic efforts of the damaged the coal teams that kept the coal afloat. Three more agents equipped ships on the next pier. One on this side of the winch or the right is the Arleigh Burke named the USS Oscar Austin. To our left, the Arleigh Burke that was number 84, the USS Bulkley. The third one on the opposite here at the end is number 66, the USS Gonzalez. Now, if you look at these Arleigh Burks, one of the things you'll notice about these ships here, right? These three ships here, right, have Notice their superstructures are built in Charlie angles and sloping surfaces. A couple of reasons for this. These are the first class of surface warships built for the United States Navy since the Second World War. They've been built entirely of steel. These are all 39 plus state of the art warships. Next pier ahead of us, Pier 8, which is often referred to as Supply Pier. We'll find two identical ships on Pier 8 to our right on the side of the pier. A Kaiser class Warler, the USNS Walter Dow, and to our left on the other side of the pier, one of our sister ships. Uh, which is the USNS Kanawha. The primary mission of each of these ships will be providing rapid replenishment control even on the shores of the fleet at sea. Past Pier 8 is Pier 9. We're going to find two amphibious assault ships on Pier 9 today. The ship on the side of the pier is Hall 44, the USS Gunston Hall. The Gunston Hall is identical to the Oak Hill we saw early in the trip today. Again, this is an LSDL landing ship dock. And the ship to the left of the Gunston Hall is coming in better view now. This is number three, which is named the USS Kearsarge. This is another one of the Navy's LHDs, the landing helicopter dock ships. Um, they're just, that ship's just like the Wasp and also the Baton we pointed out earlier. On the other side of the pier from the number three, we'll find another assault ship coming to view. This one has, you can see an opening on the aft end or start of the ship. That is number 19, the USS Mesa Verde. Mesa Verde is another one of the Navy's LPDs, a landing platform. 
components of the San Antonio class. In fact, that ship is just like the USS New York we saw in Drawn a bit earlier today. And to the left of the Mesa Verde, we'll find another one of the um, fleet of oilers. This one is just like the supply we pointed out to you a few moments ago. That one to your right is the USS Arctic. Next we have to your right, we'll see ships on is Pier 11. And at the end of the pier, we'll find a Kaiser class oiler. Right behind the uh, Leroy Grumman is a Tyco cruiser named for the Battle of Belagoff. Coming into view on the other side of Pier 11, and only the, the Navy referred to them as super carriers because they're over 1,000 foot in length. The Truman certainly falls into that category. The ship is 1,092 foot in length. The extreme width and breadth of her flight deck is 252 feet. She is the equivalent of a 24 story building for the bottom of the the top of the mast. That will give you an idea of how big the ship actually is. The flight deck of the Truman covers an area of 4.56 acres. On the flight deck of that ship, they can have four football games going on at the same time and still have room for spectators. When fully loaded, 39 feet of that ship is below the surface of the water. Channel depths in this harbor run between 50 and 55 foot deep. The ship will carry aboard several million gallons of fuel. That is a 100,000 ton ship, but you can always rephrase that. 100,000 tons of diplomacy. Thank you for watching. See you next time.